So I think, you know, I've been in the climate finance tracking issue since, since 2010, actually. And, um, you know, I do see progress along two lines. Uh, one certainly is that the transparency and the information on climate finance has improved uh, considerably. I think the latest BA uh, certainly shows that there is a much better collaboration between the different groups of climate finance providers, from the MDBs, uh, the IDFC, the OECD, and also us at CPI, who've been we have been tracking climate finance um, you know, in a comprehensive way since, since the beginning. Um, and that obviously then you know, starts helping you to understand really where we, where we stand compared to the investment goals and needs that the world has to get us on a two degrees pathway. And that I think is the second good piece of news that I see. Um, what we've seen in, in our latest um, figures is that after um, leveling off in 2012, uh, declining in 2013, um, in uh, 2014, actually, uh, climate finance uh, increased by 15%. It's now at 392 billion US dollars, according to CPI's uh, climate finance landscape. And this is more than ever has been spent on climate action. So that is very good news. Um, needless to say that you all know that, you know, in order to get us on a low carbon climate resilient pathway, more needs to be done. We know the figures that are out there, the trillions. I always uh, mentioned the IEA's estimate of one trillion per year to get us on a low carbon uh, um, you know, energy sector pathway. Uh, and so I think we should not, notwithstanding all the progress, we should not forget that there is an urgency. If we really want to go below two degrees, then we really need to join forces and make sure that we scale up investments and that we use public mo money most effectively to unlock private investment.